Now this video is going to be dedicated to Jim. Jim always asks me to video pappies and then tend to forget. So today we're actually starting outside pappies. Um, sadly it's not open and um, like most places we'll find today they're going to be closed. It's winter time here in Mallorca, it's December, it's December the 18th and uh, we're in sort of a like a closed down period. It's a time when the, uh, the Ayuntamiento, the council, starts to do the work, so just behind us, just in front of us actually, uh, there's a group of men doing some work, tidying up the roads, and uh, hopefully all of that gets done in the winter so that it's ready for the tourists when they come in the springtime. So, Jim, I hope you enjoy this video and I hope I cover most of the places you ask me for. Hello Jim and happy Christmas. So we're going to head into Palmanova. We usually start at the opposite end, but uh, Anita wants to do a little bit of shopping at this end, so we thought it sensible to park here and we'll walk some of the way into Palmanova and have a look to see. Interestingly, the, the paper shop here did close down for a time and it suddenly reopened, so that's good. And um, we're not going up into Torranova today. Uh, turn over just up the hill there, past EastEnders and Prince William. We'll cross over here. And we're just going to walk down towards the sea. We'll have a little walk along the promenade. And then we can come back through the streets at the back. Just as we're walking down the promenade, we can see some boats out there. The weather's been very unsettled settled, uh, over the past two months. And it's actually a little bit chilly today. Warmer yesterday, I think. Um, and the sea has been incredibly rough uh, during the last couple of months, together with all the rain that we've had. And uh, just as we were coming down, I said to Anita, the sky still doesn't look right, but we've got blue skies up there today, so it's looking a little bit better. And there are some places that are open, they're just telling me that Origin, just up here to the right, above the Cantina Sol, have been having their movie nights, which uh, seem to have been quite successful recently. I live in this block here. Yeah. And we just... Uh, getting a lovely fresh breeze and Naz if you're watch, watching uh, well thinking of you hope you have a happy Christmas oh and uh, a deserted beach I don't think we're expecting to see anybody on the beach and uh, very few people on the promenade so we usually walk in the opposite direction so Things look a little bit different today. Actually quite good weather for walking, it's cool, not too sunny. And he's got his sunglasses on just in case. <laughs> We were out last night uh, in Palma and uh, while we were there we did some videos of the, the lights around Palma which are really quite pretty and we also did a video of a, a nativity scene which is something that is very special here in Mallorca, Spain I guess. Uh, they do wonderful nativity scenes and there's one particular one in San Miguel which we always like to go to and we managed to get in there yesterday and do a little video so if you get an opportunity have a look at that one and, uh, and the lights I'm still working on the video of the lights there's lots of bits I have to put together so when that one goes up have a look at those too And the other video we put up yesterday was starring Anita <laughs> making her mince pies and uh, she did a great job they taste really good they are delicious 
to ration them. <laughs> so she stuck most of them in the freezer, so I can't, I can't have them. We're just walking past CISO. CISO has been really busy all through the summer, but uh, taking a well-earned break now, as most of the businesses will be. And just to our left is the San Matias Beach Hotel. Closed off for the winter. This is normal now. Uh, hotels don't open here. Usually in the winter time, there are one or two hotels open, but not very many. I think I read in the in the newspaper a week or two ago that there's about a hundred hotels in the whole island open. Um, so not many hotels open. It's strange, really, because when we first came to the island. Did have all round, year round tourism, and we always used to spend our Christmas time visiting places like the Hotel Santa Lucia, which is in front of us, and uh, Christmas Eve party, New Year's Eve parties would be quite spectacular there. Take the children, we all have a really good time with all the tourists that were here. <laughs> so Jim, if you're still watching, we'll, uh, we will do the road down to my left on the way back. Assuming I don't forget, of course. Uh, but for this part of the walk, we're going to take the, the promenade, promenade round to the right. You do enjoy reading the comments that you make and thank you very much for those it sort of encourages us to to go on and uh, getting all the new subscriptions helps too it just makes it all worthwhile for us so in front we have the Hotel Santa Lucia closed off at the moment and uh, looking pretty good though really good and Shauna, this is where you'll be coming to stay next summer, all being well. Let's hope everything works. And uh, I'm looking forward to meeting you, Mum Claire, next July. When the weather will be a little bit different, a little bit warmer. This is the Santa Lucia Hotel, just to our left. Sea looks a little bit choppy. Boats aren't bouncing around too much, but uh, the sea is definitely disturbed. Walking around, uh, we're out in the fresh air. We no longer have to wear a face mask, but some people prefer to. Um, we too have the Omicron, Omicron strain of the virus, which is pushing our numbers up incredibly quickly. Um, we were at one time. Uh, below 50 cases on a day and we're now up into hundreds and hundreds of cases a day. I think there was over 700 cases yesterday in the, in the Baleares, so, including school children. the other islands. Yeah, yeah well, potentially a lot of it is being uh, passed on by school children, so the authorities here 
have uh, decided that children as young as five now uh, can be vaccinated and Anita and I both went for our boosters last week and in, in the queues there were a lot of youngsters so I think they're doing the uh, 9, 10, 11 year olds first and then they'll work their way down to the younger ones. We're certainly hearing now of more people that we actually know in different parts of the world, not necessarily here in Mallorca, are catching Covid, so it certainly isn't going away and hopefully they won't be suffering too much and uh, get over it very quickly. It's still a big concern to everyone. Fortunately for us, fortunately for me, school's broken up and uh, I'll be off for the next nearly three weeks. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> Strangely, our school goes back on a Friday, Friday the 7th of January. That'll be quite nice, going for one day and then we've got the weekend. And Friday's a half day for you anyway. <laughs> Friday is my half day, so finish at lunchtime. Chinese. Happy, happy Chinese there is uh, got people inside cleaning, getting ready to open up. But uh, most of the other places along the front here are closed. I said before it's a perfect day for walking. I think absolutely right. This is just warm enough. Not cold idea. Gloves on. Got your gloves on. And in the distance I can see the volleyball players are out. Good day for them to be playing volleyball. Very quiet on the promenade. Considering it's uh, Saturday. Um, it's before lunch. Might have expected a few more people out. Perhaps they're out shopping. Parts of Palma that we were walking through yesterday were very busy. And the car park that we parked in was nearly full. So lots of people in Palma yesterday. And again, many of them that were walking around were wearing masks outside, as well as the compulsory wearing of, of masks whenever you go inside. And we did stop off for dinner, and uh, as we went into the restaurant, the very first thing that they asked was for our COVID passport, which uh, we have on our phone, because it's a nice, convenient way to carry it around. And uh, the rules as of today, um, they keep changing, so it's difficult to keep up. Um, the rules of today are that any bar, cafe or restaurant which accommodates more than 50 people have to ask for uh, your COVID passport. You have to show that you are have been double vaccinated or you've had your PCR test within the last day or two. And if they don't, then there's a potential fine of hundreds of thousands of euros. So it's not a it's not something that they dare uh, not do, because if they do, if they get caught, then potentially there's there's a fine which is going to close down their business forever. Um, so they ask for it. Uh, it's very straightforward. You go in, you show it. They have an app which reads your QR code and on their phone it comes up with your name. Now, last night they were happy just to accept our name. Um, but on previous occasions they've asked us to show photo ID as well to prove who we are and because we 
we are residents here, we have a, a residence card, which is photo ID. So we can always show that, or your driving license, or indeed your medical card. A medical card has your photo on. So here we've got, besides our passport, we've got three Spanish uh, photo IDs. Well, the British driving licenses have photos on. British driving license, yeah, the new ones, but not everybody has a new one. Most people do, I suppose, now have the the driving license which has the photo on. But uh, I do certainly know people who still drive around with their pink or green uh, driving license, which was like a certificate. past the tourist information office here. Doesn't look to be open. No, not many tourists around. The tourist information office, besides being a tourist information office, is an office for the citizens of Calvia to go to. And there you can actually pick up um, a certificate that proves you are a resident in Calvia. And uh, you need those if you want to travel to the mainland so that you get your 75% discount on travel. So if we take a flight from here, say, to Barcelona or Madrid, and when we up, go for that flight on the book it on the internet, they ask you if you're a resident. And if you are, you get a 75% discount. It also works on the ferries as well. When you book in your ferry, you get a 75% discount. So it makes the transport off the island uh, very much cheaper. And between the islands as well. So if we wanted to go to a different island, we would also get that same 75% discount. It used to be 50% went up to 75 percent and calls to uh, eliminate it because it's too expensive for the government but uh, so far we, we still have that but having said that we've not used it the past two years because we've not really done any traveling in on the mainland um, we would normally be going to away football matches this time of the year and uh, that means flying to wherever but with the present restrictions uh, it's just not happened but hopefully in the not too distant future we'll be off again seeing different parts of Spain and taking in a football match as we do and while I'm talking about football Copa del Rey which is the the FA Cup of Mallorca of, of Spain um, Mallorca played last week. It was one of the very much lower division teams, but they won 6-0. So hopefully that's given them the confidence to, to realise that they can score goals. And uh, they're playing tomorrow. Granada tomorrow? Yes. It's an away match, so um, we're going to go to the Mallorca Cafe with our friend Monroe and Marcia. Um, it's at lunchtime, so we'll have lunch then, watch the match, and hopefully see Mallorca score some of those goals. Let's all pull them through to the next round of the Copa del Rey, the King's Cup, which is going to be played, I think it said in early January, against Ibar. Is that right, darling? Elche. Elche. We need to check on that one. Who's with thee? <laughs> you can see most things closed, one or two things though still open which is good. So Jim, I hope you're still with us, as I'm now standing outside your namesakes. <laughs> No, we're not calling in. We're not going to go for a Big Mac. And uh, it doesn't look like we're going for an Etapa today either. I think they've closed. It's the 
eyes open, we'll go and have a coffee there. Alright, and if you are spoken, if the beehive is open, we go for coffee. We actually drove along here this morning on the on the way. The eye was actually closed at that time, so it's about half an hour ago, they may have opened. And if not, we'll find somewhere else. <laughs> I must say we came down here a few weeks ago and found it difficult to find somewhere to go and eat. A lot of places, a lot of bars and restaurants. But as you've, uh, if you've noticed as we walked along, most most of them are closed. So it's not easy to find somewhere that is open to go for something to eat. Noticing some more major work across the road. Started since we were last in Parmanova. So I think it's about six weeks since we last did a video walking through Parmanova. I think it's um, yeah, certainly over a month. And the Taboo, the Restaurante Taboo, is having a facelift. still going to be the taboo when it has had its facelift. As you see further down, there used to be, used to be a Chinese restaurant. Um, it's now the Acme supermarket. It's not open. But it's got the lights on. I don't know whether it's open or not. But it is. It is Sunday. Oh, and it does say closed. Saturday, not Sunday, Saturday. Closed on Saturday. It's unusual. Beehive has all the chairs out, so my guess is they are going to open later on. But I think the locks are on the door, and there's nobody sitting at any of the tables, so maybe they're going to open later on. Tables and chairs there, and um, they're all set up, all out, but they're all chained together. Uh, and that's what the cafes, restaurants, and bars do. Uh, overnight, they will just chain, chain all of their tables and chairs all together. Otherwise, there's a possibility they will disappear. I did a video of the lights in Palmer yesterday, and I'm just noticing the palm trees here are all decorated maybe we should come and do an evening walk through Palmano and have a look at the lights here There's going to be plenty of opportunities to do that over the next weeks so, stop off here for a coffee yes. this is the Can Blanc and uh, so they've got some tables where we can just stop and have a coffee. Well, coffee time at Camp Blanc. Um, sitting right on the front in the sunshine, so we're probably a little bit silhouetted in the picture. Looking at the sea, and uh, the temperature's not too bad. And it says it's a little bit cold, but I think it's quite fun. So, um, cheers, everyone. We are to be here. Oh, we've just had a nice coffee. We bumped into some friends as well. Are you having a nice coffee? No, they are. No. Coffee. What on earth's that? Yeah, hello. That's a goldfish bowl. Very nice gin and tonic. Lovely. Lovely way to spend the day. Yeah.
Enjoy your drinks. Thank Lovely you to see you. Bye. 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 So we're just going to continue our walk. We've uh, just walked along part of the front there, the beach, and we're going to walk along the, the back road here, uh, which uh, many people ask me about. I tend to video some of it and not video other bits or forget to put some parts in that I'm supposed to have put in <laughs> anyway we just uh, been walking along the road that runs parallel to the promenade and Bora Bora is open somebody asked me about that We thought uh, we'd done away with COVID testing. Uh, and that's come back with the, the increase in numbers. So places like this test centre, it's not open at the moment. Um, but uh, anyone going to the UK now has to provide a, a test. One of the reasons we decided we'd stay put you noticed but Anita's bought a new scarf as we were walking along she spotted some scarves so Christmas she scarf. had to have one <laughs> one of the places I forgot to mention in a previous video is the Bertarelli's properties and we've just seen the family uh, having their gin and tonic was it, it was. my goodness well uh, there's Bertarelli's properties and we wish, wish them every success in the new year Tandoori night, we always enjoy an Indian it's a place to look for in the future but Jim, who I've been mentioning uh, throughout the videos, particularly asks about some of the bars, cafes that are along this road and sad to say I think most of them, if not all of them, are actually closed now. Some never did open uh, during last summer. Um, one of the ones he's particularly interested in is Monroe's. Um, I can't remember now the last time that was, was probably over two years ago. That tip was open. But places like Taylor's, which have been open and been doing a good business, they're taking a, a well earned rest and break. The park's finished, children's play area. Uh, good to see children making good use of it. One that is open is Gelatius, just behind the Barbuda Beach. We've heard some very good reports of Gelatius, though it's not somewhere we've actually been ourselves yet. different I think perhaps in the winter time to what you'd expect them to be if you're comparing when they're open in the summer and there's lots of people here across the road we've got uh, Lady Dyes it's been closed for a very long time as well. The one on the beach side was open for a while. This is the Happy Chinese that we saw. It's getting ready to open. And uh, here we can see they're getting a delivery. Santa Lucia and 
with all of the bars and shops that you'd expect to be open when you come out of the Santa Lucia in the summer. They all close up for winter. So normally when I come down to see my family who are staying at the Santa Lucia, we would usually go into either the Orion Bar or the Three Brothers Bar across the road there. Uh, neither of them are open to very, very quiet. I'm just watching an aeroplane coming in. People will be coming here for Christmas holidays. People will be planning their holidays for next summer. One of the things that's been a big concern here in Mallorca is uh, a restriction that the Spanish government imposed for people coming from the UK that they have to be double vaccinated uh, if they were over 12 years of age and when they made that decision the UK government were only vaccinating children over 12 with one dose and that meant families got a big problem their children couldn't come <laughs> I'm sure some, some parents would think that was good we'll leave them with the grandparents <laughs> however the consequence is there was a sudden drop in the number of bookings and uh, I think that uh, it will all eventually blow over hopefully in the next uh, few weeks as more and more children in the UK are eligible for this second vaccination and even younger children as they are here I'm just going to walk behind the San Matias beach. One of the places that just never seems to close. Rasputin's has been open like forever. And uh, people in there having a drink. in front and uh, if there's any, vid uh, any restaurants up there that you wanted me to video then I'm not going to do it this time we'll have to do that another time because we will be back this way this is where our car's parked on Mr Magaluf the sun's coming out again How are you feeling with your nice warm scarf? Very nice. Very nice. <laughs> I did notice as we were driving in today that there were lots of parking spaces. There's lots of parking spaces here which you would never normally find on a Saturday. But, uh, Obviously not many people coming into Palmanova this time of the year with cars. When you're in the sunshine, it does feel the sun, can't you? Yeah. Really good, get your vitamin D up here. <laughs> I did mention earlier on that we both had our boosters this past week. And, uh, and this time it was my turn to have something of a reaction. So the following day I just didn't feel good at all. Sort of... Fluey. 
a few aches and pains and just not feeling generally very well. Under the weather. Under the weather. Is that what? Well, I was under the weather for a, about 24 hours or less, um, but slept it off and uh, felt fine the following day. Whereas Anita um, had no problems, really. No, I had my flu as well, one in one arm, one in the other. Yeah. A bit of arm ache. So. <laughs> a double pop with a little bit of arm ache. So, uh, we get now a new or an updated version of our vaccine passport which says that we've now had three of three so at the moment it's three three jabs for our age group and uh, so we've had our three and uh, lots and lots of other people i was asking some of my students this last week how they'd gone on and uh, they've all been double jabbed Across the road, we've got one of these test centres, the Waneda. It's one of the places that does them. And, uh, <laughs> I thought they were open. Now I see there's a paint bucket there, so they were getting uh, all painted up. And we're pretty much back where we started. So, Jim, I really hope that we've done what you wanted us to do, and <laughs> we got Pappies in. We certainly got Munros in, and maybe a few of the other bars that you mentioned as well. So everyone, thank you very much for watch watching. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank you, bye. Bye bye, happy Christmas everybody. Happy Christmas.